Walmart store closings keep getting stranger and stranger. Here are five facts about why Walmart's closings are not normal and may signal that massive unrest is coming. Number one, Walmart originally closed five stores in the West and Southern United States in April 2015 without publishing a press release. Workers in Walmart were notified the day of that they would no longer be employed with the company, resulting in 2,200 lost jobs. No employee was offered an explanation, and only after significant pressure did Walmart finally put out a very strange press release. The stores closed due to plumbing problems, and the estimated time for their reopening would be six months. Number two, Walmart announced that in 2016 it would close an additional 269 stores around the world. 154 of them would be in the United States, but a lesser known statistic might actually be more important. And this is the fact that Walmart closed 10% of its stores in Brazil this year. Brazil is currently in a huge economic recession that is quickening to a depression. Dilma Rousseff of Brazil has called for Brazil's military to marshal the streets of large cities due to rioting, protests, and widespread distress. If Walmart's closings in Brazil are any indication of what's coming, then America has much to be concerned about. Number three. On top of the 269 store closings in 2016, Walmart has closed additional stores for unusual reasons, including a Wiley, Texas Walmart, which was hit with hail damage during a storm. Walmart announced that the store would be closed until further notice, though sources noted that the hail was marble-sized and did not cause damage to the Walmart in Wiley. Yet, the Walmart closed anyway. Additionally, brand new Walmart stores across the nation are being shuttered. Walmart claims that this is because of their sharpened focus on portfolio management. Store opened just 12 short months ago, the big ribbon cutting attended by local officials. Now the new neighbor they welcomed with open arms will shut its doors for the last time in just two weeks. Why would you go to the expense of building a building and putting a store and then all of a sudden, and then tell their their employees, they got two weeks. Interestingly, just last month, Google, a known partner working alongside the CIA, accidentally leaked a map showing nearly every Walmart in the United States permanently closed. Naturally, the lamestream media did not report this, but an Arkansas local newspaper did. Google was quick to explain that the map was just an accident and that it was working to fix the problem. Yet it is strange that only Walmarts were shown to be closed on the Google Maps, perhaps a glimpse of a future reality. Number four, after store closings in 2015, several observers noted that there was a ton of security outside and surrounding the Walmart stores. In fact, there was 24 hour surveillance. Later, FBI and Department of Homeland Security vehicles were photographed outside of the store. And not only this, but tanks, Humvees, and military helicopters were seen around these Walmarts. The stores were emptied of their contents, literally millions of products, and razor wire was erected around the sites. The pharmacies of these Walmarts were left open, and certain individuals who went in to fill their prescriptions took photos of the stores from the inside that were gutted the walls not having any products on them. Now, it appears that Walmart is doing the same thing with at least 269 additional stores. One Walmart in Montana has already been transformed into a prison, while other Walmarts, including one in the state of Ohio, look like they have become detention centers. A video from 2010 posted by Janet Napolitano of the Department of Homeland Security proves that a relationship has existed between Walmart and the government involving Homeland Security. Hi, I'm Janet Napolitano, Secretary of the Department of Homeland Security. Homeland Security begins with hometown security. That's why I'm pleased that Walmart is helping to make our communities more safe and secure. If you see something suspicious in the parking lot or in the store, 
say something immediately. Report suspicious activity to your local police or sheriff. If you need help, ask a Walmart manager for assistance. Why Walmart, one of the biggest retailers in the world, is intricately involved in the DHS is a mystery. Number five, what you may not know about Walmart might actually shock you. Walmart is an industry leader and pilot of biometric and RFID technology, becoming one of the first Fortune 500 companies to employ RFID throughout its supply chain. Back in 2012 and 2013, Walmart brought Solo Health Stations into their store and announced that they were a part of an Obamacare initiative. What very few people took note of was the machine's ability to scan RFID chip technology. Specifically, it had an apparatus underneath the machine that was used to scan RFID chips and to collect huge quantity of data on individuals. An RFID chip was one method of activating the machine's memory, which allowed it to store data on literally thousands upon thousands of people who used it. The Solo Health machine has been under quiet production for many years, with Walmart as a pilot company testing out these machines. Much of what Walmart has done with Solo Health stations has gone under the radar. And in case you don't believe me, I want to read an article from an online publication called Modern Materials Handling. They document that Walmart and the Department of Defense have a long-standing partnership on RFID technology initiation. Going back to the early 2000s, this partnership was to track items as a part of the supply chain. This article goes on to speculate that RFID will be introduced on a much wider scale in 2016, and that RFID needs to be reinvented. Walmart and the Department of Defense have worked together on this. So was RFID just a project to track items, to track products in the store? Or perhaps was it for another reason, to track something else? Are Walmarts now transitioning to their true purpose? the uh, husbands and wives of the men and women in the military has begun conducting briefings for dependents. These would be the dependents that are stationed on the near the East Coast, the Atlantic Ocean, near the West Coast, the Pacific Ocean, and near the Gulf Coast. And at these briefings are being told the following, that there's this planetary-sized object called Nibiru that's coming into our solar system. It's going to be causing very severe problems, much more so than it already is, very soon. And that they're being put on standby to bug out. They're being told that there'll be little notice, possibly two weeks or so, before they're given the notice to bug out. Oh, they're also, by the way, they're being shown a map advance four to six weeks is probably pretty likely probably not more than three or four months so that's that's our belief i hope we're wrong i hope that uh, this turns out to be a uh, incorrect information if it is well that's great if it's not if it turns out to be correct then you've got your heads up so i asked a question this morning to all of you out there to the several thousand of you listening to me on the morning of July 11, 2012. What would you do if you had six years to prepare? 
What would he do if he had six months to prepare? What would he do if he had six weeks to prepare? Mike, it was two weeks ago today that I uh, announced uh, the information I received from two confidential sources. Now, one was uh, a confidential source who is a dependent of a Department of Defense uh, employee, part of continuity of government contingency planning, by the way. Uh, not all DOD and not all uh, government employees are part of uh, COG, uh, continuity of government contingency planning. Anyway, at this briefing, which was, they had to sign a non-disclosure agreement before the briefing began, they were told that they were putting on, being put on standby for evacuation, that they may get as much as two weeks' notice, they may not, and they started talking to the, telling these dependents about Nibiru, Planet X, and how this planetary-sized object was going to uh, cause massive flooding uh, on all coastal areas. Now, the map they were shown is very similar to the map of my DVD. I need to get a copy of that to you, by the way, Mike, if I haven't. And um, that was pretty much it for that, that source. Um, the second source uh, is in the uh, Department of Homeland Security, and that source basically confirmed what the first source said uh, without uh, going any further on that. And then, then the following day, or the same day, I should say, you came up with uh, your own sources, Mike, and uh, why don't you tell us about those? Well, um, the source that, that first told me about this, and, and I've been doing some digging since then, but uh, the, first, the source that first told me about this is a director-level individual for a foreign intelligence agency that I have uh, occasion to speak with uh, now and then. And what I was told, and I was told this probably maybe 60 or 90 days ago, and um, I, I didn't put a lot of credence in it at the time, but as I've uh, researched, I, I have to put more and more credence in it. And, and as a qualifier, I have to say this up front that, you know, perhaps this is being floated as disinformation to discredit people and to discredit. So I, I have to give a caveat there. I don't think it is, but it could be just that, that type of effort. But I was told that to be very prepared on the dates of uh, August 17th and the dates of uh, September 26th, that a planet-sized object would be passing its, uh, passing very, very near the Earth. And I was told that the distance, the closest distance would be um, maybe five to 10 Earth diameters. It would come that close. And that we should be on the, uh, be prepared for massive earthquakes and as a result of those earthquakes, uh, tsunami-level flooding in uh, coastal uh, areas. Now, since that time, I've done some more digging, and I, I spoke with uh, intelligence sources within the U.S. who not only confirmed that, but added some more fuel to the fire. And one of the things is, is that this object is coming in at an extremely high rate of speed. And um, what... Uh, what the, the, the other concern is, besides just the, the, the near passage, is that as this thing passes through the uh, asteroid belt, it's going to disturb the orbit, the stable orbits of many asteroids that are out there that are orbiting and be like a, uh, a cue ball on a billiard table and send these things going helter-skelter in every direction so that no one knows where they're going to end up and uh, what their ultimate destinations are going to be, and that we may be living with after effects of this for a number of years into the future. Absolutely. And uh, then you had a second source, uh, I understand, as well. Well, the second source was the one within the U.S. government. There was another. Uh, my, my primary source was from a foreign intelligence agency. Right, right, right. Well, uh, the the distance that you described, uh, ten times the the Earth, uh, the Earth is about twenty four thousand miles in diameter. Um, so, uh, ten times that would only be a quarter million miles. Um, <laughs> that's about the distance of the moon, by the way. Yeah, that that's close. And and uh, I, I've been told that this the size of this object um, could be as big as 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 the moon. Could be. Um, it, it's, it is being tracked currently, and the primary tracking station is that large uh, dish in uh, Puerto Rico, I believe it is. So um, yeah, I'm, I'm, um, 
I'm, I'm trying to learn more and as much as I can, as quickly as I can, because this will affect a lot of people. Now, I also have to tell you, I have been told point blank information that I can't share because I said, I was told if I go on the air with this, that my, my truck's going to blow up with me in it. <laughs> and, uh, okay. you know, uh, and, and mostly what that has to do with the high rate of speed it's traveling at and how it achieved that high rate of speed. Um, you know, the, the, the term slingshot comes to mind. Right, right. So, uh, well, when, when this, you know, when this thing comes into our solar system, Mike, it it's, it it comes over. It's coming from the south, by the way, and as it gets clo deeper into the so our solar system, uh, approaching our sun, it picks up speed, uh, does a loop to loop around the speed around the sun, excuse me, where it slows down and then and then starts picking up speed as it goes back out. Uh, now the size you're describing is not the size I've been hearing for forever for the tenth planet. This sounds like something far smaller. Our moon is a fairly small rock compared to the size of uh, Planet X or Nibiru. Uh, so I'm I'm a bit confused on that. Uh, I have been told also that Nibiru or the tenth planet has a debris field about a quarter million miles wide, which would put us well within the debris field if it's coming that close. Well, you know, John, I, I have to be honest here. In there's, I don't know what I don't know, and I'm having a hard time discerning what is real information from what is disinformation. Right, right. Because that that's one of the things that that um, the powers that be will do is they will give you bits of information, but they'll also give you bits of disinformation. Right. And so it it's up to us to use our our own discernment to try to determine hey what's real. And, and and what's bunk and uh, I, I'm I'm struggling with this. I, I have to agree. Very agree. Well, I, I uh, the quant and I've described this live on here. I know you typically don't listen to my show because you're trying to get ready for your own mic. But typically, what I do with this is uh, first of all, I describe the quandary that I find myself in, and I think you find yourself in. Also, we come across information like this uh, from reliable sources that don't know each other. If it's true and we don't report it, then we could be directly responsible for a lot of lives being lost. If it's not true and we report it, well, then we get some egg on our face and life goes on. Uh, what I'm doing, uh, Mike, is encouraging people to look at these dates as an uh, opportunity for a training uh, opportunity for us to evaluate our prudent preparedness, uh, develop a plan A, a plan B, maybe even a plan C, uh, to be able to evacuate if we live on a coastal area and be able to have a safe haven to go to. Uh, the dates of August 17th and September 26th may or may not be the accurate dates on one hand. On the other, the scientists I work with, and I work with a number of scientists, uh, they're all in agreement that, yes, this thing's coming. And when it does come, it's going to cause massive flooding on all coastal areas. As you probably know, Mike, I've debriefed about two dozen Navy veterans who were at the classified briefings, telling them that during their lifetimes this coastal flooding would occur. So I agree with you. It's a quandary. Uh, it's something that we need to encourage people to, to do their own research, to uh, achieve their own level of discernment, and make decisions based on the knowledge that they gain. Well, well John, if worse comes to worse, it may be a good time to take the family on a camping trip and just be a, away from any large urban areas at all because if, if something of, of this magnitude occurs, there's going to be mass panic. And when that happens, uh, your freeways are going to be like parking lots and you're not going to be able to get away. You're going to be stuck where you are. Temperatures are going to flare. Uh, people are going to become desperate. And it, it, it might not be a bad time to... Uh, Take advantage of um, you know a national park somewhere. Take the family out camping. Be prepared. Take as much stuff as as you can. Um, you know that that's that's useful, utilita uh, utilitarian to you, and and just be somewhere else. If if you've got yourself a a cabin or a vacation home or you own rural property someplace, then uh, better yet, you know it's it's uh, you might I guess you do, you may just want to be out of the city. This cities. is Dabu Seven. Just want to make folks out there aware that FEMA 
is going to be conducting this full-scale training exercise at the Next Era Energy Seabrook Station. This is a nuclear power plant that is located in Seabrook. This is going to go down on April 8th, 2016 in New Hampshire. And this sits right there on the border uh, with Massachusetts. And they're going to have local authorities participating from both areas in this event. This has all been announced by the U.S. Department of Homeland Security. So DHS, no doubt, going to quietly be overseeing this with FEMA observing and evaluating the governmental response aspect, and the NRC will observe and evaluate the on-site performance of all the plant staff during this. Now, officials are stating that they've warned communities within a 10-mile radius of this place. Now, I'm not so sure that that's happened. So if any of you guys out there live near this place, let me know somehow. Reach out to me on Twitter. Send me an email. We need to have someone on the ground up here that can really see what's going on because we've seen similar events in the past where they try to say that they're doing this or they're shutting down for a drill or an exercise like at the WIP facility in New Mexico and they actually released radiation and they did this timed with them taking down all the sensors. Now they're going to have a press meeting or a briefing here at 11 a.m. on April 8th at the end of the exercise. And at the event in New Mexico, when it came to the press briefing, there was no one there, no mainstream media whatsoever. They just do not show up to report on this stuff. So the doors open to media, but often people don't even know what's going on, know that it's going down. So once again, if there's somebody out there in this neck of the woods that can get on the ground, gets any kind of information, let us know. Um, anyone down there with a rad detector, get some local readings. Wouldn't hurt just to know, you know. Anyhow, if you're out there and you hear me, get at me. I'll leave a link in the description box. Wanted to make folks aware of this. Just let them know that uh, FEMA is holding this exercise, full-scale training exercise at this Next Era Energy Seabrook Station. And this is going down on April 8th. I'll leave links in the description box. Till next time, this has been Dabu7.